Hello. My name is Lindsay Sturton and I am Professor of Public Law at the University of Sussex. I made this video to welcome students who will be taking public law in the autumn semester, which is due to start in a little over a month. You might be a new undergraduate taking public law, or a graduate entry LLB student, or a returning student taking public law one advance. There are some differences between these different presentations of the module, which will be explained in due course. Both of these modules are team taught, and at the end of this video, some of the other team members will introduce themselves. But for now, welcome. If you are new to the study of law, as most of you will be, you might be wondering, what is public law? I am not too keen on definitions as a rule. I think they often end up confusing more than helping, because it usually turns out that the way that people use a term in practice is too varied to fit any particular definition. But maybe it is okay to start with one, just to be getting on with. A public lawyer whose work has influenced me, J.D.B. Mitchell, said that inevitably public law exists in some form, wherever the machinery of government operates. So we could start by saying that public law is the law of government or the law of politics, just as commercial law is the law of business dealings or family law is the law of personal relationships. Introductory courses in public law are often divided into constitutional law and administrative law. And this one is no different, except that it doesn't draw too sharp a distinction between these branches of the subject. But criminal law is also considered part of public law, even though it is taught as a separate module at Sussex, as it is in most universities. So too is tax law, which is not currently taught in Sussex Law School. What these latter two areas have in common with what is usually thought of as the core of public law is that they are concerned with the power of the state over individuals the power to prosecute individuals in the courts or to fine or imprison them if found guilty in the case of criminal law, or the power to demand payment of taxes in the case of tax law. But from here on, we will be concerned with constitutional and administrative law as two core areas of public law. For now, it is more important to say something about the nature and character of public law and about the way this module is taught. The first thing to say about public law is that, inevitably, given its subject matter, there is a lot of politics involved in the subject. This is what first drew me to the subject, and I know that one of the things students really like about this module is that they learn about politics while they are studying it. But I also expect that some of you have never before taken an interest in politics or public affairs, and that, for at least some of you, learning more about politics and government won't endear you to the study of law. If this describes you, I want to say that is absolutely fine. We all have likes and dislikes, and we encourage you to form your own tastes and preferences, even if you end up counting the subject I love amongst your dislikes. But you have chosen to study a subject, law, that is in places intimately connected with government and politics. It goes without saying that we don't approach the subject from a party political point of view and that all opinions and perspectives are welcome on this module, provided they are backed up with evidence and argument. And unless you are particularly good at guessing, you won't even know which, if any of the political parties I or any of your other lecturers support although you may hear some of our views on certain specific issues relevant to the module. Think of it like this. If you want to be an effective family lawyer, you would have to know something of the way families operate, the dynamics of how parents relate to their children and vice versa, the commitments that couples want to make to each other over the long term, and what happens when married or cohabiting couples fall out, and so on. The difference, I suppose, is that this is something that most of us have some experience of before we come to study law, whereas very few of us have prior experience of politics and government. 
In contrast with family law, public law can often seem remote and abstract at first, but we will support you as you familiarise yourself with the subject. In seminars, you will undertake role plays or simulations in which you have to act out a scenario as a constitutional actor. As the Prime Minister or the Home Secretary or the Leader of the Opposition, and in your reading lists, which are available online, you will be guided to works of politics as well as law and which explain the political dynamics as well as the legal rules and principles which apply to different situations. You will be directed to YouTube videos that I have made specially for this module. For every topic, you will be given a briefing note that will tell you the essentials of what you need to get you started on your study of the topic. From there, you can start to work to tackle lectures and seminars, as well as your own independent reading on each topic. Speaking of readings, I would like to recommend a couple of short books from Oxford University Press's Very Short Introduction series, which I strongly recommend that you read before the new university year starts. If you look at how this book series describes itself, it says very short introductions are for anyone wanting a stimulating and accessible way into a new subject. They are short and not too taxing for holiday reading. So I do recommend that you get hold of these and read them before the module starts. There will be more than enough heavy texts to tackle once the module gets underway. In the interest of full disclosure, I should mention that I was sent these by the publisher for evaluation. The first one in the series that I recommend is by Martin Lochlin and is called The British Constitution, A Very Short Introduction. Martin Lochlin is a very well-known British writer on constitutional law and he describes his book as a narrative history and it is just that. It takes the reader through the leading ideas and doctrines of the Constitution from the remembered Anglo-Saxon Constitution and the centralising effects of Norman rule that were important to the way people thought about the Constitution in the Middle Ages through to the significant constitutional changes made by the turn of the Millennium Labour government. It will introduce you to the major events that have shaped the British Constitution over a thousand years, as well as the key thinkers people like William Blackstone, Albert Dicey and Walter Badgett, whose ideas have shaped thinking about the Constitution. We will learn about these events and people in more detail in the course of things, but reading the very short introduction to the British Constitution will get you off to a great start. It is quite a pessimistic book in many ways. It starts by outlining the pride that British people used to have in their matchless constitution and over a hundred or so short pages tells a story of loss of faith in our institutions of government. I should say that I share Lochlin's concern with the modern state of the constitution, but I wonder if the pride in the matchless constitution that he describes was ever as widespread as he portrays. In the Middle Ages, people harked back to the ancient liberties that supposedly existed before the Norman Conquest. And Dicey's famous Introduction to the Study of the Law of the Constitution, first published in 1885, describes a constitution that was already transforming into something radically different as a result of the extension of the franchise and the growth of the modern administrative state, as well as the dynamic style of government which these things required. All this, I suppose, is a rather long-winded way of saying that Lochlin is in rather distinguished company of writers who describe the Constitution in terms of a fall from grace. The other book in the same series that I recommend that you read is by Anthony Wright and is called British Politics, A Very Short Introduction. Tony Wright was a lecturer in politics before serving as an MP for for nearly 20 years until 2010, and as an MP he became chairman of the Public Administration Select Committee. In this module we will touch on the right reforms of the House of Commons. So Tony Wright is someone who has both academic expertise and practical expertise of politics and public administration. 
I like the book, especially because it has an institutional perspective, which goes well with the legal study of the Constitution. The book starts and ends with a discussion of the Constitution, and it is up to date. The last few years, it doesn't have to be said, have been unusual ones in British politics, with Brexit in particular being an issue which challenges many of our conventional assumptions about politics and the Constitution. So I recommend that you read these two books before the beginning of term. Tony Wright's book on British politics I would particularly recommend if this is an unfamiliar topic to you. Perhaps you have never taken much of an interest in public affairs before, or perhaps you are an overseas student coming to study in the United Kingdom for the first time. I'm really looking forward to teaching public law this year. I am looking forward to getting back to the classroom after a year of teaching online. I'm looking forward to sharing some of my own research on aspects of the Constitution with you, which have been published over a number of articles and book chapters, as well as in an edited book with my colleagues at other universities, T.T. Arvin, Richard Kirkham and Dahi McShee. It is called Executive Decision Making and the Courts and was published in February of this year. I will, of course, be making the relevant parts of it available through our online reading lists. One theme that I have been thinking about is decolonizing the curriculum. This is a movement that has become increasingly influential in recent years, and I have been working with student connectors, as well as with the library, to think through how we can better include the perspectives of colonised people into the teaching of public law. It so happens that I am an expert on the constitutional history of one colonised country, Jamaica. My first job as an academic was at the University of the West Indies, and I thought that, looking at the Jamaican experience, both as a British Crown colony and then as an independent country with a constitution very much in the British mould, sometimes called the Westminster model, could sharpen our understanding of public law, as well as giving an insight into the colonial history of our constitution. We will also look from time to time at the constitutions of other former colonies and dominions, including especially Canada and South Africa, as well as Ireland. For me, this is not about political correctness or jumping on the latest bandwagon. It is about understanding the diversity of experience of the British constitutional model, and learning about this should in time make you better lawyers. I will give just one example. One of the first issues we will look at on the module is that the distinctive nature of the UK's unwritten, or perhaps more accurately, its uncodified constitution. We will look at whether it would be feasible or indeed desirable to condense a thousand years of tradition and experience as a written document. Jamaica's independence constitution of 1962 was modelled after the United Kingdom's constitution, with the crucial exception that it was codified so an examination of Jamaica's experience can teach us a lot about the difference between written and unwritten, or codified and uncodified constitutions, and the challenge of codifying what in the context of the UK are non-legally binding constitutional conventions. The video linked here in the banner link will give you a flavour of what we are talking about. So what I am most looking forward to about public law is teaching you at a really exciting time in the development of our public law. Our constitution is in a period of change and I cannot always pr promise easy answers to questions about public law. What I will try to help you do is ask better questions. To use the famous trinity of the first director general of the BBC, Lord Reith, I hope that you will be informed, educated and entertained as you study the module. I look forward to seeing you when term starts. For now, we will close with some brief introductions by some of the other members of the public law team. Hi everybody, my name is Pavan Basita and I'm one of the members of the public law teaching team here at Sussex. 
Um, I'm going to be taking you for some of your lectures and also some of your seminars. Um, I uh, had my first baby last year, so I've had a bit of time off work. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to getting back in the classroom and um, meeting as many of you as possible. Um, and hopefully uh, not having to sing as many nursery rhymes as I have over the past year. Um, so yeah, I can't wait to um, meet you and hopefully get you as excited about public law as I am. Hi everyone, my name's Will McCready and I'm going to be one of the seminar tutors for public law this year. I'm taking two of the seminar groups, so if you're in one of my groups, then I really look forward to meeting you this autumn. I've been teaching at Sussex for uh, the last three years, and before that I was a barrister at Garden Court North Chambers, where I specialise in immigration and asylum law, which is itself um, an area of public law and one that intersects with international refugee law and human rights law. Um, so those are some of the areas that I'm interested in and uh, really looking forward to meeting you this autumn. Hi everyone, my name is Hannah Blitzer and I'm a doctoral tutor on the public law teaching team here at Sussex. I'll be taking some of your seminars for the next academic year. So just a bit of background on me. I'm doing my PhD on broad issues in UK public law, including human rights law. I actually did my undergraduate law degree at Sussex and public law was one of my favorite modules. So I'm really excited to have the opportunity to teach it now that I'm a doctoral tutor. I'm really looking forward to welcoming you all to Sussex and to meeting you this year. See you soon. Good morning and a warm welcome to Public Law One. I am Dr. Gianluca Gentili and I'm a law lecturer at the University of Sussex specializing in comparative public law. But more importantly, I will be one of your seminar tutors for this module. As a comparative lawyer, I strongly believe in the enrichment that comparisons with other constitutions and other legal systems can bring to our understanding of our own constitution. And so during our, during our seminars, we will introduce some comparisons with other constitutions around the world to understand better the functioning and the structure of the UK constitution. I'm really looking forward to working with you. See you soon. Hi there, my name is Lucy Finchett Maddock. I'm one of the lecturers who's going to be teaching you on the public law module in autumn. So I'm really looking forward to teaching you. I'll be yeah, delivering some of the lectures and looking forward to getting into the nitty gritty of public law with you. Bye.